Is your lizard brain ruining your life? Now I bet you're thinking, what do I mean? What do you mean? By lizard brain. Well, I, I don't have a lizard brain. No, 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 no. I've got a human brain. Well, the term lizard brain is sort of a derogatory term. What do your two lizard brains know? When somebody says like lizard brain or reptilian brain or reptile brain, what they're referring to is, is a part of your brain called the amygdala. Now this, this part called the amygdala is sort of located it's hard to say sort of like in right sort of in this in the center of, of of the head it's not like on the outside it's right in in the center the reason why it gets called the lizard brain or the reptile brain or reptilian brain is because reptiles most of their brain is actually made up of the amygdala. That's that's sort of pretty much all they've all they've got. Sadly, yes. <laughs> See now, the amygdala is on sort of like a like um, an evolutionary scale. It's the oldest part of of your brain. It's sort of like the first thing that was sort of like evolved. Now, the amygdala makes roughly about 90% of all decisions made. And one of the main functions, if not its main function, is the f fight or flight re like reflex. I don't know if you've heard that before, the f fight or flight, basically in a um stressful or confrontational sort of situation the amygdala will kick in and essentially it will tell you either to 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 run or to fight now the amygdala is is brewing it's it's essentially kept the human race alive for thousands of thousands of thousands of years because like you imagine back in the day cavemen stuff like that and you would have had you know dangers everywhere sort of uh, saber-toothed tigers and and bloody creatures of all sorts all, all this sort of stuff all the tribes attacking all this sort of stuff the amygdala is what kept the human race alive because it either told them to fight or to run. But you see, thing is, these days, we're living in a world where we don't really need the amygdala anymore. We don't need the, the, the fight or flight because we're not really in any danger or anything like that. The amygdala, AKA the lizard brain, also affects sexual arousal. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Now, obviously, a long time ago, it was prudent to um, keep the human race going, the human race, you know, keep it alive. And and so it was sort of like a primal instinct, like, like this, this hardwired in um, into the amygdala to, to procreate, to, to, to mate and, and have, have children. So that, again, was sort of like a... Um, a primal instinct that was needed to to keep the human race going. The amygdala as well will also affect sort of your your social status. Say if say if you've already um, you know you've you've got a good job and you've got a nice house and you got a decent car and you're earning good money. If any of that sort of becomes threatened, 
then your amygdala, your lizard brain will will kick in and you will you potentially because you don't want to lose these things. You can potentially start acting irrational, maybe sort of like lashing out, getting upset, getting angry, things like that. The amygdala also controls hunger. Me hungry. So you got to think when, you know, you, you don't need to think about being hungry. Your body will tell you when when you are hungry. That is the amygdala kicking in. The amygdala says, you're hungry now. Your belly starts rumbling, then you know to, to eat. So a lot of the functions of the of the amygdala are very primal very basic functions essentially it's it's like uh, a hard drive that that has software code you're afraid of change hard coded into it that can't be erased it's not like a rewritable it's there and it will always do that so you can't you can't sort of like change it or anything like that with with the with the amygdala it is what it is it is what it is the amygdala as helpful as it as it's been throughout the years you know keeping the the human race alive it does actually have some serious flaws now the amygdala is is very lazy no! it's it's sort of it, it doesn't it doesn't like stress it doesn't like danger or or anything that's that's going to get it riled up it like it, it likes it to be peaceful calm easy chilled out and the trouble with with that is it sort of it can mislead you and misguide you into basically not wanting to do anything or not not pushing not pushing yourself see now luckily being humans we've developed and pretty much most mammals have it but it's 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 primates um and humans that that have the most um developed and and bigger of these and that's the neocortex or uh, the, the prefrontal cortex now this part of your brain is the the sort of outside of the brain so it sort of in, engulfs the um, amygdala and the limbic now the prefrontal cortex or the neocortex that is sort of the on the evolutionary scale that's the newest part of the brain and essentially what that does that's the thinking part of the brain that's what kind of sets sets humans apart from pretty much most most animals <coughs> because our our prefrontal cortex is is the is the most developed so like I say the prefrontal cortex is the thinking part um of your brain it's a, it's the it's a part that can you know come up with questions answer questions uh comes up with with like rational thought um with with ideas um you know being able to build being able to create things and what you'll find happens a lot of the time with some people or hopefully a lot of people the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex will battle it out see now some of you probably have had this some of you may may not and you might have it after watching this video have you ever had those times 
where you've had a decision to make and you've got like two voices in your head. Say for for example, like going like going to the gym or something like that. Going just something as simple, you know, going going to the gym, and you have one side <laughs> chirping in your ear, going, "No, don't don't bother going to the gym. Just you know, go go home, watch some TV, eat some junk food." You know, that's good. That's relaxing. That's, you know, it's chilled out. We don't have to worry about anything. It's easy. It's it's simple. Well, that's your amygdala flaring up. But then you've got another voice on the other side. And it's saying, come on, no, go to the gym, put in some effort. You know, you didn't you didn't go yesterday. Go today. Go today. Do some training. You'll feel good afterwards. You know, then then you can, you know, get yourself a protein shake and a shower and, you know, have some healthy food and, you know, you'll feel you'll feel great and you'll sleep better tonight for it. That's your prefrontal cortex. So that's the rational part of your brain. That's the parts, you know, saying, you know, do do the right thing. And then you've got your amygdala, which is the sort of like the primal, the basic hard-coded, you know, knuckle-dragging Neanderthal part of your brain, just go, no, no, don't, yeah, don't worry about that, don't do that. See, now, if you, if you get that, then you're sort of, like, halfway there to sort of overcoming it. Because there are a lot of people, and I don't want to sound bad, but you can see how many people you can you can see them walking down the street in the shops at work you can look at them and you can you can tell which which part of their brain like how many which part of their brain wins the most battles and i don't want to be nasty but it's usually the people that are overweight the people that are just lazy can't be bothered to do anything no ambition, no drive. Those are the ones that clearly the the amygdala wins. And it's probably like no fault of their own because they've probably just got so used to the amygdala winning all the time that they don't understand that there's that there's that there's something else. Now there's another part um of your brain which is just sort of past the um, amygdala and that's the limbic now the limbic is something that sort of controls like your emotions uh, your memories um, sort of like stimulation arousal and what sort of happens is both these two parts can can sort of like interact with each other. The, the, the limbic and the amygdala can interact and that's usually called uh, the limbic system. So when, when those two are interacting with each other. So it's sort of like sort of like two mischievous children if you like and sort of like when they when they get together they, they start to sort of like egging egging each other on you know I dare you the limbic and the amygdala, amygdala the lizard brain often work hand in hand and like I said the the, the limbic sort of controls things like memories emotion arousal so how they can sort of like intertwine with with each other um some sort of like examples like a classic one that the um i think a lot of people have have had where you know like you're feeling sad sad <laughs> you're feeling upset you're sad um 
I don't know, you've just gone through a breakup or, I don't know, you've lost your job or, you know, whatever it is, you feel, you're feeling sad. Then what starts to happen is you remember the last time that you were sad, you had some cake or some ice cream you know, and it made you feel better. So it happens again. Your limbic starts saying, oh, go, go get, get some cake. And your amygdala pipes up straight away going, yeah, 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 go get some cake. Come have some cake. It'll be, it'll be fine. It'll be great. It'll make you feel better. It'll be okay. And it sort of, you, you sort of know that you shouldn't be having the cake. Because it's only, it's, it's not going to make you feel better for long. And you probably just feel worse afterwards. All the, you know, sugar and stuff like that. But your, your prefrontal cortex sort of like just gets switched off. Another another example, um, say like uh, getting aroused. You just, I don't know, maybe on Instagram or something like that. And maybe a, a girl pops up, quite attractive. You look at her, you start feeling aroused. <laughs> The amygdala picks up on it, the primal instinct, you know, you're a, a pretty girl. You want to have five minutes on your own to not want out. Are those sad tissues or happy tissues? Oh. Then you can have sort of like, I don't know, a, a bad memory or, or something like that. I don't know, you, you may have been out on a bike ride or something. And then you fell off your bike, you really hurt yourself. You've got this bad memory in your head. Someone's like, oh, do you want to go for a bike ride? You think to yourself, oh, last time, last time I did that, I hurt myself. I don't know if I really want to do that. Your amygdala, your amygdala kicks in, says, no, don't, no, don't do it. Play it safe. Just stay at home. So you can see how sort of both like the the limbic and the and the amygdala sort of like can can intertwine with with each other so like i already mentioned the amygdala is lazy it doesn't like stressful situations it it just likes to be chilled out just doing all the fun stuff and sort of one area that that really sort of um or one thing that the amygdala amygdala loves is addictions because the addictions any sort of sort of form of addiction it disrupts the um prefrontal cortex or the uh, neocortex so addictions sort of like mess with rational thought. That's why, that's why when you see like, you know, drug addicts when they haven't had the fix, they're the you know the skin, you know, they're not thinking straight. It's why you know alcoholics if they haven't had a drink, they're not thinking straight. It's why even, even as simple as as you know like cigarettes. You know what I mean? You you speak to someone who hasn't had a cigarette in two, three hours and the, and they're on edge. And then you speak to them straight after they've had a cigarette, cool oh, as a cucumber. Yeah. So addiction sort of mess up the the prefrontal cortex. It stops it from from doing its its thing. Now we all know the sort of the main chemical that pretty much any sort of addiction releases is a chemical called dopamine. It's like serotonin and dopamine goes whoop. You get it obviously when you're taking drugs, uh, you get it when you're having a beer, you get it when you know you're, you're smoking a cigarette, you get it when you're eating cake. Now, your amygdala loves dopamine hits 
it remembers them and it remembers what brings it brings on those dopamine hits so when you're there and you've got a choice of a cake or some fruit your amygdala is going to be there screaming out cake 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 get the cake Obviously, your 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 prefrontal cortex will be screaming out, "No, don't have the cake. Have have the fruit. It's healthy. It'll be it'll be better for you." Now, the bad side with the sort of addictions, at least in like in this modern era that we are currently living in, is social media, and sadly these nerds zuckerberg um jack dorsey whoever they are i don't know even who like people at netflix all that sort of stuff they are they are programmers who are absolute geniuses and they know they know how to manipulate the amygdala we've all we've all had it where we've gone on our phones and we've been on social media facebook instagram whatever and and we're scrolling and we're just scrolling 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 and we say oh i'm just gonna, just gonna go on it for five minutes and then before you know it, an hour's gone by, hour and a half's gone by, you're still scrolling, you're looking at all these all these distractions. Well, your amygdala loves that because you're feeding it dopamine. Yippee! So if it's the choice of doing that or getting up and, I don't know, doing like a, a, a writing in a journal or, you know, looking at how to start your own business... Those are all things that require the prefrontal cortex. Those are all things that require work. Where it's just scrolling. Perfect for the amygdala. Because it's just simple. It's easy. It's lazy. And it feeds it its dopamine hit. Now I'm... I'm not perfect. I sort of managed to... Like unknowing to me at the time, I've sort of managed to tame my amygdala quite quite well. Not all the time. I'm still, like I say, this is still a journey for me. This is me still um, practicing and trying new things. But where I managed to to sort of like get my amygdala under control is going to the gym so sort of i am i am now like the, my amygdala doesn't even pop into my head when it comes to should i go to the gym or not now like, unless i am absolutely ill unless i'm sort of like blowing out my ass and you know I've got a cold or I'm throwing up or something like that. I will go to the gym called hell or high water. And it's like my, my amygdala doesn't even, my lizard brain doesn't even attempt to, to put me off it. That's where my prefrontal cortex just absolutely kicks the shit out of my my uh my lizard brain it it absolutely destroys it and i'm like really like i say i did it without even knowing any of this it's sort of like since i've been researching this sort of thing it's like i've realized oh hang on you know i've i've managed to do like this this part where i tend where i tend to fail where i tend to struggle is Partly my eating. Um, I'm not a binge eater. And since realising having dairy 
um, doesn't quite agree with me. That's actually helped me out quite a lot because, like you know, pretty much all cake has has milk and butter in it. Ice cream, dairy, chocolate, dairy. So I've I've managed sort of like um, like I said I mentioned before like the the the, the limbic and the uh, amygdala sometimes like a lot of time work hand in hand well sometimes sometimes See the ya. limbic will actually work with the prefrontal cortex and so like i say when it comes to me eating and 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 with the dairy i was having dairy it was giving me spots i remembered that having dairy gives me spots like through, through trial and error, but it's imprinted in my head now. Dairy will give me spots. Now, when I am faced with a dairy option, rather than sort of like my amygdala kicking in and saying, no, no, I'll just have the ice cream. No, just have the cake. No, just have the, the chocolate bar. My prefrontal cortex kicks in and goes, don't touch that because you know what will happen if you touch that. And it won't be good and you'll get some spots. And you'll feel like shit, so don't touch it. And the prefrontal cortex wins. <coughs> and so I know not to, like I say, sometimes dairy gets in, and I don't because I don't know that it's in there. It's sort of like not listed or it's hidden or. So, I've managed to sort of fix it on the um, on the food side. The only trouble is, it's like these days. Obviously, with all the like the vegan options and and stuff like that, um, you know, what I mean, you get vegan chocolate and vegan ice cream, and you know, so it has started to make it a little bit harder now that there's these vegan options, and so I do find myself slipping sometimes, and that's something I need to um, get under control. Um, other other areas where. I, I tend to slip is just just doing um, these sorts of videos because I'm at work all day then like most days I go to the gym straight after work and I'm there for like two hours <laughs> then I have a shower come back home have have something to eat by this time, it's already kicking on sort of like eight o'clock. And I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> and my amygdala, my lizard brain starts kicking in. And it's like, going, come on, you've been working all day. Just chill out. Just watch some TV. Just watch another hour of TV. Then do some work. Just, oh, just do it. And I, can f and I can feel it. And it does win sometimes. I'll be hands down. Like I say, I am I am sort of learning all this as well. It does sometimes win. So I'm just trying to sort of beat it in in that sense. Another way that I'm trying to overcome it at the moment, and I'm sort of like half and half of this, is social media. Like I mentioned before, sort of like the the boffins at Facebook and Instagram and all the other ones, they know how to how to hook you. And because sort of like you're getting that dopamine hit from from social from doing like the social media, like, you know, going on there and swiping and checking what's going on because you're getting that dopamine hit. They actually say people who are addicted to social media are getting sort of like a similar spike of dopamine to to drug users it's like this it's the same it's registering sort of like the same in the brain so i mean just like hearing that you got to think gee like that's nuts like just just looking at facebook or looking at instagram is sort of like the equivalent to to taking drugs and some people say, oh, it's just social media. Social media is a big, 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 big problem. Big problem at the moment. So I'm trying to overcome it with the social media. I do sometimes find myself getting hooked. I mean, part of the problem is because I want to look at 
trying to create a business or develop a, a YouTube channel, obviously I look at content for ideas and how to do it and all that sort of stuff. Um, and, and sadly, it's like you can't, you can't avoid it. I mean, I'm telling you now, things like social media and stuff like that is 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 bad for you. But here you are now on YouTube watching me talk about how bad essentially YouTube is. I mean, it's like, but to some degree, it's a necessary evil. So I think in 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 this respect, you you got to see it for what it for what it is, and just know how to control it and not and not let it not let it take over so some things that can help with with the whole um sort of like trying to destroy your the lizard brain or at least try and dull it down you don't want to necessarily destroy it because it still can be helpful um in survival situations but to try and get it under control there are some things that you can do now i sort of just mentioned one of them is dope is related to it is sort of like dopamine detoxing basically what that means is stop anything that is going to give you a sort of like massive dopamine hits now that's i mean it's difficult like i say i, I can't be preaching because because i struggle to do it but these are things that i have heard that i've listened to so one of them is is like dopamine detoxing so it's it's avoid looking at your phone all the time sort of like try and put it down try and put it away don't don't have it in another room don't have it with you all the time again i'm not preaching i fall foul of this but um obviously cut back on excuse me cut back on things like like if you're smoking weed stay from, stay away from the weed like you know your amygdala your lizard brain loves weed because it just sort of like makes you just want to be lazy makes you want to eat junk food so try and cut back on on things like weed um cut thing cut back on things like alcohol like say alcohol it, it dumbs your prefrontal cortex your your lizard brain will just kick in your amygdala will just kick in it's why when you go out um you know drinking and stuff like that you lose like your inhibitions you obviously become more confident but that's your that's your sort of like your amygdala just sort of like kicking in and and sort of like you're not worried about stuff you can't think straight another thing apparently this is something i've got to start doing and i keep hearing people talk about this all the time like pe people who are sort of like on the self-improvement journeys and people talk about it all the time and they keep going yeah i'll do that i'll do that i'll do that and again it's just trying to find the time because i'm just so i'll push for time but that is meditation now i'm i'm not doing meditation yet i keep meaning to but that is that is something that is i've heard repeated over and over and over again meditation meditate sort of center your mind sort of like refresh everything reset everything back to back to zero and meditation can help that obviously it's not going to do it in just like one session or two sessions or just a day or two you have to do it over a period of time and eventually it will kick in so i am told so yeah that's it for for this video i just wanted to it's it was something that I found interest in this whole lizard brain and it sort of helped explain a lot and I could see how things that I've previous previously done in the past 
how like my decision making was influenced by either my amygdala or my prefrontal cortex. Like I can tell like from decisions that I've made who was actually speaking at what time. And I thought it'd be just um you know, an interesting video just to uh just to go over some stuff. So yeah, if you liked it then please do um hit the like button please do leave a comment let me know what you think do you have trouble with your lizard brain does it win over a lot of the times do you struggle or or have you found some new techniques to overcome it is this is this something that that you could teach me um how to how to sort of you know do down the, the 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 lizard brain um please do hit the subscribe button it will help me out loads i'm just trying to get this channel off the ground hit the notification bell um so you know when i have um released a video um so other than that i will see you in the next one